I wanted to share you guys with you guys Psalm 23. It is probably one of the most familiar passages in the Bible. It's one of the most beloved. I mean, you hear it at weddings and funerals and kind of everything in between. It's this, um, it's a, it's a chapter that we pull out when we need comfort or reassurance that we're not alone. And when we're facing, you know, a crisis, especially, you know, death, it's one of those, it's one of those that's associated with really deep comfort. But what I, what I love, one of the things I love about it is it's that it's um, sometimes people who don't have any faith at all will still hear Psalm 23 being recited and can join in with a few of the phrases because it's just sort of a part of the lingo um, of, of our culture and, and our world. And it just felt like that as we're getting ready to pause and pray for our families, for ourselves and for our children, that it just was right to read again Psalm 23. There's there's something comforting about the rhythms of the phrases and the words that are used. And um, anytime that there's something that is repetitive, that that is soothing, it, it brings down stress. So I really felt like that reading all of Psalm 23 um, to you, and you might even just wanna close your eyes as I read it, um would would bring down some of your stress that's why i asked luan to do breath prayer around psalm 23. so just let the familiar rhythms of of these words flow over you you don't have to close your eyes but you might just want to in your heart listen again um, to these six very short little verses the lord is my shepherd i have all that i need he lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. That last verse, verse six, really caught my attention today when I was preparing to share with you. Some of the translations say, your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Others say, your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. One translation says, your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go, always, everywhere. So I just looked up those words, goodness and mercy, because sometimes English language is pretty inadequate to describe um, words that were originally written in Hebrew. And the word, the Hebrew word for goodness is the word tov. And the English word, the Hebrew word, excuse me, for mercy is chesed. And they're just far richer than our English language can describe. To be followed or chased or pursued by God's goodness, by his tov, it's it's an extraordinary thing to consider because at least as i think about my life as parent of a child with serious mental illness and and how deep the chaos often was like kelly and john just described um i often felt like i was chased or that my son was chased but we were chased by demons from hell um i often felt like that that matthew was just chased by by torturers emotional and mental tortures. And sometimes in that deepest, darkest valley, one translation says, that deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, where I think all of us have unfortunately hung out way too many, way too many hours of our lives as we have contemplated the suffering of our children, of our families. But sometimes in that deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, it can, it can make us forget that 
contrary to what it seems like that our children are being chased or pursued or we're being chased or pursued by by the very demons of hell because it's so bad and it's so chaotic or that the torture is what or the the bad times are just rolling just one after another and that's what feels like is chasing after us but contrary to that which is real sometimes we forget that god is right there chasing after our children after us pursuing us with his goodness and his beauty that can get lost to me it did get lost and sometimes even in the grief of loss of matthew's life i can lose sight of the fact that yes there has been terrible suffering and we have walked in that deep sunless valley too many times also along with that god is chasing pursuing following after us with his beauty and his goodness and then i looked at the word mercy because in, in, in english or faithfulness sometimes it's used and this is a word that is so full of meaning that i that there's not in any single english word no, not even one english word can begin to encompass what the bible means when it says that we're being chased by followed by um, pursued by god's mercy it takes this combination of words let me read you the words that that have to be included when we think about this. It's words, loving kindness, devotion, mercy, strength, grace, purity, loyalty, tenderness, steadfastness. So when the Bible says we are being chased, pursued, followed after by mercy it's saying we are being chased and followed after by loving kindness devotion mercy strength grace purity loyalty tenderness steadfastness it's just incredible to pause and remember that we and our children are being followed and pursued and chased after by god's supernatural multifaceted love that cannot even be summed up in a single word. I also like that this verse talks about not only our present, that this knowledge that we have that his tov and his hesed, that his goodness and beauty and his, his mercy and loving kindness and steadfastness and grace, that those things, those aspects of who God is, that those are following us all of our days here but there is this connecting word in the middle of that verse, and it's that simple word and, but it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and, and so we transition from what we are being followed, followed by and chased after here to what is our future. So it's our present and our future. In our future, it says that we will live, we will dwell, we will abide in the home of God days without end, forever. Sometimes I need to be reminded that, yes, I have a future, but I have a present where I need to know he's with me. And other days I need to know, well, it's not only just this life. My eyes get so limited by the difficulties of the days here and the chaos of the days here or the confusion or the grief or the sadness or the missing or the longing or the all the things that can fill my days here that I forget that there is actually more than even this life. And what I have promised is for God's presence in my present and his presence in my future. I love that this psalm just says in every which way you can think of, it says that we are, he, 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 um, he lets us rest in green meadows. He's, he's beneath me. He is the green meadow. He is in front of me. It says he leads me and he guides me. He says he's beside me directly, just says you are close beside me. And then it says, you will pursue me. You follow me. And then I'll live in your house forever. You will receive me. So to know that God is beneath us today, that he is beside us, he's in front of us, he is behind us, and he will receive us on that day when Jesus comes for us, sometimes is what we need to kind of get through 
some of the darker moments. And it just means that we can keep walking. Um, that's kind of my encouragement to you is, is to keep walking on this pathway because we are not alone. We talk about that all the time and breathe that, that we are not alone. It often feels alone, but we are not. And we are not consumed by the darkness, that deep sunless valley that sometimes we find ourselves in, that we don't have to be consumed by the darkness of fear or anxiety or dread or defeat. We have a friend, a savior, a warrior who is fighting for us, and we have a shepherd who promises his presence beneath, beside, in front of, behind, underneath and above, and forever with us, to walk with us on this journey of serious mental illness with our children. 